This short webinar will provide an overview of how to use Job Scheduler on Compute Canada National Data Centers. Here are the basic facts. The new data centers, which are known as GP2, GP3, or Cedar and Graham, are shared high-performance computing facilities used by thousands of researchers. As a result, one cannot expect to simply log into the system and run your code instantly. One has to use a scheduler and submit your computation as jobs to the scheduler. The scheduler used on these systems is called Slurm. It's true for this and any other scheduler that the more resources you ask for in your job, the more CPU cores, the more memory, more GPUs, the longer runtime you ask for, the typically longer the queue wait time will become. We will go through four basic commands of Slurm Scheduler. The first one is sbatch, is used to submit a job. Second is sq, to list your current jobs either queued or running. Those jobs which are already completed can be viewed with another command, sacct. Finally, if you ever need to queue or cancel a job, you should use scancel command. Let me give you a quick demonstration of how these commands are used. So this is the shell. I logged into the cluster. I'm inside my home directory, subdirectory called Slurm. There are a few files here. The green in these shells means it's executable. So I have three executables, serial, OpenMP, and MPI. Very simple programs, hello world programs. And you can also see there are three job scripts. They all have extensions, sh. And let's have a look how the simplest job script will look like, which is job serial.sh. With sbatch command, you always have to create a job script. And that job script looks like this. This is the absolute minimum things you have to have in that script. It always starts with number sign, exclamation, slash, bin, slash, bash. And then it lists one argument per line all those S batch switches and arguments you want to specify. At the very least, you have to provide the runtime for your job with dash T. By the way, some of the arguments have both long and short forms. For a full description, uh, you need to check help pages for S batch. Uh, these lines always start with number sign capital S batch and then the switch with its own argument. In this case, I'm specifying the runtime for my job will be zero days, dash, zero hours, column, one minute. So it's a very, very short job, real job, uh, much longer. And next thing, at the very least, you have to specify how much memory your job will consume. The way you do it is slightly different between multi-threaded and MPI jobs. So in this case, it's just serial jobs, so it doesn't matter. So I'm saying dash, dash, mem equal 100. And the units are megabytes. So I'm asking for 100 megabytes. With both of these arguments, time and memory, make sure leave some caution at the top so you're not going to run out of uh, the resource. For example, if you underestimate the runtime of your job, your job will be killed after the time you specify here before it actually manages to complete successfully. Same here with the memory. If, if it may run out of memory if this number is too small. And on the following lines, you list the code you want to execute. In this case, it's a path to my serial hello code. If you need to put anything else to be executed before this code, you can put it here. Or anything after the code completes, you can put it on the line here. Any other as batch commands, you just keep adding one line at a time. So let's now submit that serial job to the scheduler. I'm going to use as batch command. And it has to have at least one argument, which is the path to the job script. In this case, it's job underscore serial. Uh, any other arguments can be added here, in addition to those listed in the job script. It will run for 30 seconds. It's long enough for me to demonstrate the other command, sq, which will list current queued or running jobs. So I'm doing this, and then sq-u, my username, as you can see. This is the job, which is currently running. And job ID, you saw already before, output from sbatch command. This is a very important number. You have to communicate it to us. If there are any issues with your jobs, you have to tell us what is the job ID. It tells some details about the job. Very important, it tells us what's the current state, which could be either queued, or in this case, it's running, 
also time. If I run it again, it's already done. It's no longer listed under SQ command. So if you want to see still the details about the job which is already completed, you have to use the third command, S-A-C-C-T. In this case, you don't have to provide dash U username. It will only show your own jobs. So ignore some previous jobs I ran recently, but pay attention to the very last line. So this is the job ID. This is the job ID. So the job is listed here as completed. Let me demonstrate how to use the fourth command to kill a job which is already running, or maybe it's still waiting in queue. So for that, I'm going to resubmit the job. I'm going to use S badge job serial. It's going to run for 30 seconds, enough for me to try to kill it using S cancel command. So I'm using S cancel and provide the job ID. No output, which means it actually did the job successfully. If I do SQ-USYM, my username, it's no longer listed there. And if I use SACCT, the job is listed as cancel. So what happens if you run as cancel on a job which already completed? Then you'll get an output which will be error output. Let me demonstrate a slightly more complicated case. By the way, here's the important point. Every time I run my job, it creates an output file, which by default has the job ID as part of its name. And this is hello world. Uh, program so it's supposed to print hello world statement the very last command was killed so instead it printed job cancel but the one previously let's say the very first one I ran it says the correct hello world let's see slightly more complicated cases let's try to submit a multi-threaded open MP job to the scheduler let's see what's different in the job script for open MP case so you still see the familiar dash t, the runtime, dash dash mem, number of megabytes. In this case, it becomes quite significant. The fact that we use a dash dash mem command, which means we are asking scheduler to allocate 1000 megabyte for the whole job, for the whole process, for all the threads which we'll be executing. Because in multi-threaded job, all threads have access to the same pool of global memory. So we're asking for 1000 megabyte for all four threads. And now we see new as batch argument, dash C4. So we're asking to submit this multi-threaded job using four threads. You use dash C with multi-threaded jobs. With MPI, you use a different argument. I'll show you later. Now this line is important. It defines OpenMP num threads variable to the number four here using the slurm predefined variable. You don't really need to know how it works, but basically you do that every time you run a multi-threaded job before you execute your binary. And here's the path to my binary openmp underscore hello. So let's see how it works. This is supposed to run multi-threaded job with uh, four threads. It runs very fast as Q we will not actually list it anymore as ACCT will list it at the bottom completed so it was success not failed and if we check the output it's here the file and then we see what's inside the file the correct print statements all four threads are reported they exist so it properly ex ran this command Let's see how simple MPI program can be submitted to the scheduler. So there is one more job script, the job underscore MPI. Dash t is the same argument as everywhere, runtime. But instead of dash dash mem, which is the total amount of memory for the whole job, for MPI we normally ask how much memory per rank, which is slightly incorrectly called mem per CPU. These days it's more like CPU core, but basically it is per rank, per MPI rank. So we're asking 100 megabyte per MPI rank. And instead of dash C, which we used for OpenMP program, we're asking for number of tasks with dash N argument. So if you want to run MPI program with four MPI ranks using four CPU cores, 
And finally, the very last line, I'm running MPI program the way it's normally run interactively. I use MPI run and then path to the code. By the way, in all those examples, if there are any command line arguments of the code itself, you can append them here. So there is argument one and so on. In this case, we don't have. So let's see how to submit it to the scheduler with the same as batch. It ran, probably it finished already. So it listed here as successfully completed. Here we can see it already produced an output and inside we should see the correct statements, which is hello world from node 0, 1, 2, 3. So that's the correct output of this MPI program. Finally, I want to show you the very basic but very effective tips on how to minimize the wait time when you submit jobs. You always have to wait. Sometimes it's a fraction of a second, as you just saw with my examples. They're very small. Uh, realistic large problems, jobs, will have to wait long in queue, sometimes much, much long. And wait time can be pretty dramatically reduced if you follow these simple guidelines. In terms of uh, job runtime you're asking for, you always have to ask for a slightly larger number than the estimated or expected value. Same true is for memory. Provide the memory for the whole job in the case of OpenMP or per rank in case of MPI job, which is slightly above what you expect it to consume. This really should also dramatically accelerate scheduling of your job. Also, try to minimize a number of additional constraints, specifically node constraints. Like if you just want to run on whole nodes only or specific subset of nodes, this can quite substantially increase the wait time in the queue. And finally, if you have a parallel program, which is actually just a bunch of serial jobs packaged into OpenMP or MPI container, it is much more advantageous to split up into a bunch of independent serial jobs and run them as such. In terms of scheduling, this is much easier to do to schedule those independent serial jobs than equivalent sized parallel jobs. I want to show you some references. For more details about scheduling, Graham, Cedar, check those links. For much more detailed overview of Slurm Scheduler, check the official documentation available on the bottom link. Thank you for your attention.